Do you remember when you first discovered glitches in Pokemon? I remember when I did. Summer, 1999, at Kingswood Summer Club. Pokemon Red and Blue had been released in the previous year, which I guess would make me 8 or 9. The Pokemon craze was in full swing over here in the UK. Every day I picked up my Pikachu Yellow Game Boy Color with Pokemon Red permanently slotted into the top. My friends and I would get together with our link cables for epic trading and battling sessions. That lasted the whole day, or until our parents came to pick us up. Around midsummer, our group was starting to feel like we'd seen it all, done it all. Sure, I don't think we'd ever caught them all. Back then, it seemed like an impossibility. We grinded to levels 100, eliminated the Elite Four more times than we could remember. The game was starting to lose its draw. There was still four long weeks of summer left. Then, we saw Missing No. I remember the first kid I knew to have him. He told us his brother showed him how to catch this super rare, super awesome Pokemon. We gathered round as he revealed the Pokemon to us. That magical, distorted, reversed L shape that held the key to infinite rare candies. We were all instantly in love and dying to get one of these rare Pokemon for ourselves. So, he passed on the secret and showed us how. Within the next few days, our little group was hooked on glitches. We scored magazines for latest bugs and tricks. We visited Glitch City, battled all kinds of high-level Pokemon off the coast of Cinnabar. We even caught Mew. But there's one glitch which I've never been able to find a record of since. Funnily enough, I can't remember the details on how to pull it off. But I remember the outcome, Glitchlet. The technique for finding this little guy followed the pattern of a lot of the tedious Pokemon encounter bugs in red and blue. Talk to this dude, fly to this place, it might have something to do with Celadon. I'm not really sure. Glitchlet was just as you expect, a glitched up Diglett. The sprite was mostly intact, but the face was distorted, missing no style. There was a few distorted lines through it, like scan lines, and the cry was a little weird too, although I can't put my finger on what it was. His level was never visible, but we guessed he must have been over 100, as we could barely put a mark on him while trying to catch him. Most of us resorted to one of the many cloned Master Balls. We nicknamed him Glitchlet, and that night, we were eagerly trying out what his guy could do. The next day, we all met up to compare results. By this point, we all considered ourselves Pokemon Glitch experts. Experiences with Glitchlet varied. One guy claimed it messed up his games so bad he couldn't play it anymore and had to reset. The other said they tried to battle with Glitchlet only to find the game crashed every time they tried. I had the most luck in battles with the new Glitch Pokemon. His only move was Dig, and he couldn't learn any HMs or TMs, even those you'd expect a Diglett to be able to learn. Against wild Pokemon, Glitchlet was a powerful, and he never lost PP. And together, we O-code every Pokemon we came across. But the attack itself was odd. It took two turns as usual, but after the first turn, he'd hit with some kind of self-damaging recoil with no explanation other than Diglett was hurt, and that strange cry. But it never made much of a mark on him. Glitchless HP was higher than anything I've ever seen, and because it took only one dig to destroy any wild Pokemon, it was never much of a problem. I laid to waste my friend's team during the Link battles, and he soloed the Elite Four. I remember when things got even stranger. I was leveling up my team as usual, the XP all. Destroying wild Pokemon with Glitchlet seemed the obvious choice, and I maxed many Pokemon this way in the past. I had woken up early that morning to level, especially. At that moment, I was under my bed covers, with my trusty Game Boy Color light. Mum would go mad if she knew I wasn't sleeping at this time. Everything was going to plan, and my new team was leveling up beautifully. I must have been concentrating pretty hard because 
It was too late when I noticed how low Glitchlet's health had become. I selected Dig for the final time and watched him begin to descend into the ground. As expected, I received the message, Diglett was hurt. I heard that piercing cry louder than before. My stomach turned as I watched his health bar slide towards zero. The bar doubled back on itself, seeming to empty for five times before Glitchlet repeated his dying cry, now a horrible noise. Diglett was killed. Do you want to use the next Pokemon? I know it's a cliche in these kinds of stories, but I remember that vividly. I selected no. My other teams wouldn't have made a mark on this enemy Pokemon anyway. I was warped to the overworld and found myself back in the unknown dungeon. Opening my Pokemon menu to confirm what I'd seen before. My beloved Glitchlet at the top of the party. Health reduced to zero. I selected him. I'm not sure what good that might have done, and I noticed that something was different. Maybe it was there before, but I think I would have noticed that Dig was now selectable outside of battle. I thought for a moment, maybe it was the atmosphere, but this move was suddenly chilling me. Glitchlet had never been damaged by any wild Pokemon, only by this move. It wasn't even as though he's hurt himself in confusion with recoil. Whatever had hurt and ultimately killed him had been underground all along, waiting, sapping Glitchlet's life each time I sent him out to attack. His death cry echoed in my ears as I realized what I'd done. My thumb hovered over the A button, my brain willing myself to dig and get out of the cave, but my stomach felt sick. What was down there anyway? I was stuck with no choice. The exit was too far away. My remaining Pokemon would be destroyed if I tried to get there. With a lump in my throat, I dug, and my sprite began spinning into the earth, and the screen went black. I wasn't surprised when I realized where I was. Not the entrance to the cave, or even the nearest Pokemon Center, but a glitched out cave that I now realized was some kind of bugged version of Diglett Cave. I checked my Pokemon and saw Glitch's health had been restored. He was now my only Pokemon. The other five members of my team missing entirely. I choose Dig again. Oak scolded me. Apparently, this wasn't the time to use that. With no means of escape, I set off looking for an exit. My sprite moved slowly, more of a crawl than a walk. As I moved, the cave walls bugged out, turning red, flexing and swelling in and out like the lungs of a monster. Slowly, Music began to play, high-pitched and distorted and horrible. It was quiet at first, but grew louder with every step. As it played, something became familiar. A familiar tune, breathing and whirling, bug notes. Without thinking, I began to mouth the words to the music. Diglett, diglett dig, diglett dig, trio, trio, diglett dig. Diglett dig, trio, trio, trio. Then I encountered a Pokemon. A wild Dug trio appeared. As distorted battle music began to play, the level 225 Dug trio appeared before my eyes. The cry was awful, warped scream that seemed to become a gnashing crush before stopping entirely. Dug trio's sprite, like Glitchless, was deformed. Doug Trio's three faces with hollow eyes twisted into pixelated howls that looked somehow painful. The bottom of the sprite, unrecognizable. It looked as though six deformed claws were raising from the dirt around Doug Trio's body. My only Pokemon was released, and Glitchlet's back sprite appeared before me. His cry played again, quiet and seemingly a lot weaker. I was just a bystander. Now, as the game took control, selecting an attack from the menu, of course, Dick was the only option. My hands were sweaty as I gripped the Game Boy tight. My breath was hot on the screen. Dugtrio went first. Dugtrio used Scratch. It hit six times, each tear triggering a painful cry from my glitched Pokemon. Glitchlet was left with a sliver of health as he retaliated with an attack of his own. Diglett used Struggle. It hardly made a mark, as expected, but 
it was strange how Dig never lost PP before. As previous, the game selected the next move. As attack was chosen, I noticed that Glitchlet suddenly had no moves. Two words appeared. The first two attacks should have been no hope. Dugtrio's cry echoed again as it laughed an assault of scratches with its deadly, horrible arms. Glitchlet was killed after the first strike. Diglett is dead. Do you want to continue? I didn't really understand the question, but that didn't matter. No was selected for me, and the battle faded away. Back on the overworld, the walls swelled and glitched before my eyes, and the maddening music began again. I inspected Glitchlet. His sprite had changed now. Although his face was never visible, like Dugtrio's, it seemed to be formed in a pixelated scream. Dark brown streaks cut through the sprite. They looked like claw marks or blood. I don't know what I was thinking at that stage. Just that this tiny Pokemon had infected my game in a much bigger way than expected. Glitch Pokemon seemed kind of wrong to me then. As though it was something I ought to not have been messing with. Something we didn't understand or couldn't control. With no Pokemon left, I was surprised to find I didn't black out or warp to a Pokemon Center. The game just continued as usual. It was only a few steps before the Pokemon encounter theme played and the screen turned black. A wild duck trio appeared. This Pokemon sprite was different to the last, almost completely disfigured. The cry seemed as though it wouldn't end, screaming and wailing as a pixelated monster appeared on the screen. Through the glitches and cut pixels, I could make out the hollow sockets of eight eyes, eight terrible clawed hands, and gaping mouths. With no Pokemon left, my trainer's bag sprite faced the glitch head on. Before my eyes, the screen faded as my Game Boy's batteries cut out. Whatever had just happened gripped me with fear. That night, I didn't sleep. I even took my game out of the now dead Game Boy. Although, I'm not sure what that would have done. Days later, I started that game up. I'd not saved during what had happened, so I was returned to my last save point. Glitchlet was at the head of my party. Dig his only move. I thought for a moment before abandoning that game forever and starting anew. But I'll never forget how it all started and how it all happened. Like something out of a horror movie that keeps repeating and repeating over and over and over whenever I saw that glitch head on. But everybody has to move on, and I can't seem to forget the whole thing like it never happened. Like digging into my skin and controlling me and my actions. But it's all in my head. I know I must have been hallucinating the whole thing. But when I see that cartridge, all the horrors I fear are still there, waiting for me to come out and scare me forever in my head for eternity to come.